Broadcasting from Financial Freedom Network headquarters, high atop Magic Mountain, California. One man sharing his journey from ditch digging to massive passive cash flow. One man who discovered the roadmap to financial freedom. A financial rebel sharing the path to economic enlightenment. Please welcome your host, Matt Skinner. This is Alternative Investments. Hey, welcome to Alternative Investments. This is the show where we expose big money opportunities that Wall Street does not want you to know about. Today, I'm here with Travis Kamita from Nashville, and he's got a company called CryptoConsultingNashville.com. Is that correct? That's correct. Awesome, man. Uh, well, first of all, we're going to talk all things about crypto today, and I'm excited to learn about this. This is kind of one of those elusive uh, new investments that are out. Everybody's going crazy about it. Um, some people think it's total garbage and other people are making tons of money all at the same time. So it's amazing how you can have like a, in the same group of people, same group of friends, even radically different ideas about, you know, is crypto good? Is it bad? And, and all, all of the other things. So I'm going to assume that you've got some positive things to say about investing in crypto. I have positive and some negative things to say, um, more so about specific projects, things like that. Uh, but yeah, m mostly positive, pretty, uh, pretty bullish on crypto. All right. I like it. Uh, before we dive into the details and I, and we will, um, can you just give us kind of a 10,000 foot view of like, what is cryptocurrency? Uh, how did it get started and, and why should anybody care? Yeah. So cryptocurrency started about 10 years ago now, um, all with Bitcoin. Um, that's kind of the 800 pound gorilla in a room. Most people think Bitcoin and cryptocurrency are synonymous, uh, while Bitcoin is really just the first cryptocurrency. Um, and really all cryptocurrency does is it uses computing power, um, you know, crypto, um, cryptographic, ha cryptographic hashes, things like that, uh, to secure their network. And one of the big selling points is everything is fully transparent. So you can see all of the transactions that happen on a network. So it was built out of distrust for banks, central governments, things like that was kind of the anarchist view of cryptocurrency. I like it so far. Exactly. Yeah. Right, right after the 2008 kind of financial crisis, um, that's, that's when it kind of got started. First, uh, first block was mined the beginning of 2009. Um, and that was the initial idea. It was supposed to be digital cash. And from there, a lot of it built out. So now you've got probably pushing 2,000 different cryptocurrencies now. Uh, some of them all, maybe half of them serve a very similar purpose. Um, mm -hmm. but different projects that are built on um, this blockchain, blockchain technology, which is really the breakthrough that uh, Bitcoin came through about 10 years ago. That's amazing. Hey, well, you brought up a couple of things that I want to get clarity on. Uh, yeah. First, we have the coin aspect of cryptocurrency. And then you brought up uh, blockchain and right. mining. And so those are right. three different things that, uh, I mean, frankly, I mean, I've read books on crypto. I've listened to uh, people talk about it on podcasts and help, help me understand better. What, what are the, what's the difference between those three and how does this whole thing work? Yeah. So that, that's a great question. That's one of the first things that I try to teach to people coming in is what, what is the difference? Cause most people assume that some people think that Bitcoin is an actual coin. Let me just set their record straight first. None, no cryptocurrencies are tangible. Um, you can't have a pocket full of Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> if we did make tangible Bitcoins, how much do you think we could sell them for? And how long would it take before we'd get, who, I mean, who would send the it's, cease and desist or the copyright, uh, you know? So there is no cease and desist. You would have to find some suckers who think that, <laughs> think, hey, I've got 10 Bitcoins here. I'll sell them to you for, $5,000. <laughs> I don't mean scamming people. I'm, I'm talking about just, it'd be kind of like a novelty item. And I was wondering like, is there an organization like who owns, who copyrighted or trademarked the term Bitcoin? And, and like, who would be the human who would say, Hey, you can't use our logo and sell, a, a, you know, a, a gold coin or a, or whatever. Yeah. Is there somebody that, that, that does that? No, there isn't. Not for Bitcoin specifically. So Bitcoin, um, it, you can't go to the Bitcoin corporate offices in San Francisco. They're not there. There is a Bitcoin foundation. That's a group of seven people who are responsible for maintaining the network. Um, if there's any issues kind of working that, if there's any improvement proposals, they will um, look to implement those. Uh, but there's no corporate Bitcoin. There's no one that's going to sue you for using the Bitcoin likeness or the image or anything like that. Uh, okay. There is no actual coin. Um, getting into the mining point of it. So there's a difference between investing in cryptocurrency and mining cryptocurrency. 
Uh, when you talk about mining, that's more of the computing power portion of cryptocurrency. So mining is really securing the network. So when there's a Bitcoin transaction that goes through, somebody has to verify that, say I try to send you 10 Bitcoin, somebody has to verify that I actually have 10 Bitcoin to send you. And since all transactions on the network are fully transparent, they can look at my wallet and see based on my past five years of transactions that I do have 10 Bitcoin to sell you. Once somebody verifies that, which the actual verification is easy to do, the mining comes into getting, basically getting a random number. And once you hit that random number, you win that block. And in order to win that block, it helps to be able to generate as many random numbers as possible. And so having a significant amount of computing power gives you a huge advantage to win that block. Um, and so that's really what mining is. It's just getting as much power, server power as you can. Um, there's a lot of server farms in China that kind of dominate the Bitcoin network. Um, mm. They're just putting out hash power as much as they can to try and win that block, uh, which happens about every 10 minutes. And so currently each block every 10 minutes, if you are the one who verifies it and you get that number, um, you get 12 and a half Bitcoin. So, oh, you get paid. so you're going to get paid to verify yeah. other people's data. Exactly. So, I'm, so if I'm checking your wallet, I put it, I, I'm going to put in my bid essentially. They're trying to get that number. Right. And if I win the number, which allows me to verify that, Hey, uh, Travis has enough Bitcoin in his wallet to pay, make whatever payment or trade that he's trying to do, then I'm going to get paid a little, a little, uh, piece for being the, the auditor essentially. That that's a great way to look at it. Yeah. So that's, that's what kind of builds the consensus consensus on the network. That's what makes it decentralized is anybody can be part of that. Um, everybody has the full network on there. If you're running it on your computer, a lot of mm. people mining rigs. Um, I run a small mining rig. Um, and so it's just, you, you're basically just running compu a computer trying to generate that number. So that's the mining aspect. So if you're doing, if you're running, uh, you calling it data mining? Um, just just I would, mining. mining. It's just cryptocurrency mining, Bitcoin mining. You can mine other coins as well. Okay. And you're doing that. So that actually takes for you, you have to have a computer, you have to have an uh, internet connection. You got to have yeah. a server. Uh, if you want to actually have a chance of winning, you've got to have some pretty substantial computing power. Got to have some power behind it. And then, and then you have to actually do the work. So you're going to, you're like going to be on, you're going to be putting the bid in and you're going to be like, or it's like eBay. You put your, you put your number in and just give me some so it's just going to run. There's a lot of software programs or algorithms out there now that you can easily go in. You just buy the computing power, hook up to that algorithm, and it's going to run automatically. Um, so I've got a mining rig that just runs 24 hours a day. Um, it's got eight processing cards in it. So it's not the most powerful, but it, it works. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just, it sits in the house and it runs continuously. Uh, and then I can check in and see kind of how many times it's won, uh, things like that. How much does that cost to set up? Yeah, so my, my personal one has eight GPUs on it, graphic processing units. Uh, it costs around, it's about a year ago, uh, it was around five to 6,000 to set up. Um, depending on the price of Bitcoin, um, we'll make anywhere between, maybe sometimes it's $500 a month, sometimes it's $1,500 a month. Uh, so it, it all depends on, on that. Okay. Uh, that's, that's a pretty good return on investment if you're doing, if, uh, yeah, if you're doing that consistently. Yeah. It's, it's some pretty big fluctuations depending on, uh, you know, how things are going in the market, but it's not bad. How much does that require for you to service that, uh, you know, that, that mine? Yeah. Um, if everything runs pretty well, maybe just a 15 minutes a week, I'll check in, make sure everything's still going, adjust some settings. Uh, We've got it set up so it'll, if there is an error or something, if it stops, it'll send me a message. And so if I get that, it may take an hour or two a week to just dig in, see why did it stop? Why is it not being profitable? Things like that. So if anybody's got, if I have five grand, six grand, and I say, hey, Travis, let's go make some cash flow. Yeah. We can, uh, we could build a kick ass system. And then uh, your consulting services might be able to help me set this up. And then we can just, pretty much print fake money, which is called, I mean, uh, currency, yeah. <laughs> just like the federal reserve does. I mean, this right. is no different. <laughs> right. That's, um, you know, when we were, I've got a partner who, who and I, him and I set it up. 
Um, and that's the way we would talk about it. It's like, when are we going to be printing money? We need to start printing money. The time investment is definitely on the front end. It's getting all the components, putting them all together. Um, you needed to have a technical background. We luckily had um, someone who we knew who was very technical, technologically savvy, helped us put it together. Um, but once it's put together and running, it's pretty hands off. Oh, that's powerful. Powerful. Um, well, one of the, uh, one of the questions that I have for you is about the central banks and, yeah. and, and regulation. Uh, do you yeah. see more and more regulation coming down the pike? And I, I've heard read some stories about some other countries uh, maybe trying to regulate this and, and how do you see this affecting the almighty dollar that so many people worship in this yeah. planet? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And that's, that's one of the big unknowns right now. I personally think regulation is going to happen. Um, I think we're still so early in the game in terms of cryptocurrency. Um, I don't think we're going to see Bitcoin replace the US dollar and become a universal currency. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, you do have a lot of central banks who are looking to shut it down. Uh, they have Senate hearings uh, over in Congress uh, here in the US a lot uh, over the past, probably the past nine months or so. And you have some people who are just basically saying, this is a scam. This is, people are going to get hurt. We need to shut it down completely. Um, and then there are some who are more progressive and they treat cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, more like the internet in the early 90s of let's take a hands-off approach and let's not over-regulate this. Um, mm. Let that innovation occur. Let's let these people who are clearly smart, let's let, let them develop their projects um, and see where it goes. Now you get it from- the Yeah, let the free market work itself out, I guess is, uh, it, is exactly. along the lines of what you're saying. Yeah, and that's and what that's, it took for the internet to, uh, or in general, to, to take off. We are going to take a pause and hear from our sponsors for the show. And when we come back, we're gonna go through the final five questions. Are you tired of paying large fees to your mutual fund broker for tiny returns on your investment? Don't have time to invest in playing the stock market just to lose your hard-earned dollars in the Wall Street casino? Your life is already busy enough. What if there was a better solution? What if there was a hands-off investment where you could make money even while you sleep? Imagine waking up two years from now, five or six figures richer, without doing anything more than making a strategic real estate investment today. Smart investors are growing their wealth by investing in apartment complexes. Apartments are one of the most stable real estate investments on the planet, offering investors cash flow, tax benefits, appreciation, an inflation hedge, and growth. And now, Matt Skinner Investments has made this exciting opportunity available to you. We do all the work, and all you have to do is cash your checks. Start earning the returns you deserve. Call Matt Skinner Investments at 310-616-5088 or visit our website at mattskinnerinvestments.com. All right, Travis Kamita, thanks for uh, being with us today. I want to dive right in and ask you our final five questions. Number one, what book would you recommend to our listeners? And that can be anything, anything to do with this particular uh, investment opportunity as far as crypto goes, um, financial intelligence, or maybe there's something that's impacted your life in a radical and amazing way that you just want to share with people. Yeah, so I'm going to keep it on topic here. The, the book that I have really enjoyed the most, learned the most from, especially with cryptocurrency. It's called The Age of Cryptocurrency. Um, it came out in 2014. I can't remember the authors off the top of my head. I think Stephen Vigna, V-I-G-N-A is one of them. Uh, but it starts at the beginning of Bitcoin and then it talks about how it came to be, but also the applications that it can have going forward. So it's not just a payment currency. There are a lot of other projects that are built on blockchain and Bitcoin's technology. Um, and so it's a great resource to get in, understand how cryptocurrency works and what the opportunities are going forward. And that book's called The Age of Crypto. Do you have the author's name as well? Um, I don't off the top of my head. Um, let me see, actually. We'll post, we'll post it in the show notes. That's going to be okay. Uh, okay. Let me ask you this. What's the worst thing that could happen if I invested in cryptocurrency? Uh, you would lose all your money. That is the worst thing that can happen. Um, Has there, is, is, that a, is that something that happens on a regular basis? And in fact, what leads me to my second question as far as crypto, and that's true for any investment, right? You could lose all your money. Um, but like, how, how would that happen inside of, I, I buy a, 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 a currency, I buy a coin. Is it really, has there been a time where it's gone zero or beyond? Yeah, uh, yes. It Worthless. Yeah, it's definitely worth, worthless. You can get to that point. Uh, 
there's a lot of, since it's still a newer technology, there, there are some scams out there. People who are doing what initial coin offerings for projects that are not true projects. So they get people to give their money initially and then they're gone. Uh, you can also, if you're not careful in understanding how to secure your crypto, if you leave your wallet unsecured, it can be stolen. Uh, that's not a significant fear. That's people think that can happen a lot. As long as you're not an idiot, you're okay. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Rule number one, cryptocurrency investing. Don't be an idiot. Exactly. I would say of any investing. Um, and then, but <laughs> That's true. There's extreme volatility. You know, um, People who invested when it was really hot back in late December, early January, um, going for today, may have lost 80, 90% of their investment, um, even if they were holding it securely, just based on the market fluctuation. So, um, you know, I, I always compare it to, if you watch CNBC and the and it all goes down 4%. People are shitting their pants. Well, that's 15 minutes in crypto. Like it can go 20% a day, 30% in an hour. Um, wow. so be be prepare, prepared for something like that. And is there a way to track that? Or, I mean, like in, in the stock market, they got charts and graphs. In fact, the next question I'm going to ask you is how does, how does crypto stack up against investing on Wall Street? Are there... Uh, algorithms or charting uh, systems like they have for the NASDAQ or for the Dow that tracks the volatility in the market on a, on a you know, split second by split second basis for day trading and things like that. And, and, yeah, and do people is, day trade it? People day trade it a lot because there is such volatility. Um, a lot of people try technical analysis on the charts uh, yep. for specific coins. Um, again, it's, it's if you believe technical analysis is beneficial, um, then you can maybe buy in. People may be able to see things in the charts, uh, but there is um, coinmarketcap.com is the one that I use. Uh, it just shows all of the coin, the overall um, crypto market capitalization up to the second. So you can see the movement of the different coins. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of charting and data out there, uh, it's definitely not as robust as Wall Street, but similar concepts of you can perform the analysis on the historical charts. And if you see a pattern and you want to go for it, go for it. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, it's really good talking with you. I would, uh, I would like to learn more. I definitely want to want to dig in. I'd like to check out that book. Um, I'd like to learn about mining. And one of the things I didn't get the opportunity to ask you about, and maybe we'll have to have you back on the show at another point in time is what, how, how can I, how could someone uh, do an initial coin offering? Because I mean, it sounds like you can just create a product and sell it, just like in, it, in any other free market, lies fair uh, arena. Well, hey, let's start our own, and how, and how would we compete? I mean, it's, it just opens the door for a billion questions for me. It does, yeah. Uh, and you're right. Anybody can do it. Um, you don't need, some people don't even have to have the actual project. You can just submit a white paper. People will read it. They could be enamored by it, give you a ton of money, and then you can leave. It happens. Um, if you want to do it the right way, you've got to have a pretty um, technical stack to do it, develop the technology behind it. Um, but that's kind of the new, uh, kind of the new venture for it is you have people, who can, individuals can invest in ICOs, early stage, usually only be open to venture capital, things like that. Yeah, no kidding. That's pretty awesome. Well, yeah. Travis Kamita, if people want to learn more about this stuff like I do, how would they reach out to you? How do, they, how do we find you to get more information and to get your uh, consulting? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So the best way to reach me or to reach our company is to go to our website, cryptoconsultingnashville.com. Um, you can obviously Google Crypto Nashville. Usually we're the first one to pop up. Go on there, read a little bit about us, sign up for a class. Um, you can group class or individual consultation and we can teach you anything you want to know. Powerful, man. Powerful. Thanks for uh, coming on today and sharing all of this information with our listeners. We appreciate it in a big way. Uh, this is Alternative Investments, the place where we share big money opportunities that Wall Street does not want you to know about.